Moving on, AI enthusiasm powering an impressive market rally over the past few months, but the U.S. power grid may not be able to keep up with that demand. One study finding that training a single large language model program takes the same amount of electricity needed to power 120 homes for an entire year. Experts are concerned existing electrical supply may fall short of AI's needs. And joining us now is Timothy Fox, Clearview Energy Partners Managing Director. Tim, it is good to see you. So I guess I'll start there. If that is sort of the challenge here, Tim, or potential challenge. Um, how, you know, is our grid here up to the task, Tim? Well, thank you for having me. I mean, this, this is coming at one of the most uh, pressing times for the grid. I mean, one of the most prevalent issues facing the grid today, the power sector, is trying to ensure uh, grid reliability at the same time it transitions to cleaner, but also intermittent resources. As a shorthand, we call this going green without going dark. Now for data centers that, that could facilitate AI, um, you know, reliability is imperative and therefore it's imperative to us. Data centers not only facilitate AI, AI but they're the backbone for our, our industries, for our commerce, for our transportation, for our health. These are mission critical infrastructure. So it's gonna be important that while we're you know, facilitating this new industry, it's not lights out for the existing industries. Well, and how do you make that happen to them? I mean, what kind of increased demand are we talking about when it comes to the US grid? I mean, do you have any estimates as to, you know, if we continue to see AI grow at the same pace, then, you know, power companies are going to need to provide X amount more energy and where is that energy coming from? Sure, so we don't do studies, but we've seen plenty of studies. And on a national US basis, power for data centers could reach about 35 gigawatts by the end of this decade. That's up from about 17 gigawatts at the end of 2022. Now to put that in perspective for those who may not be following the power sector as closely as I do, that's about as much power as the state of New York consumes at any moment on the hottest day in the summer. It's their peak demand. So you're saying that these data centers would be consuming about as much power as the state as New York does during the hottest of days in July or August. And Tim, the, you know, would you expect to see um, some kind of, uh, of policy changes due to some of the issues you're highlighting here? Well, you certainly could see some. Uh, policy changes tend to come during instances of grid instability or, or energy scarcity. As long as the grid is working, it may not keep uh, it may keep lawmakers at bay. The bigger concern, I think, for a lot, it's, it comes from a lot from uh, state regulators. State legislators that, that create the policy are also often have an agenda. The state regulators seem to be far more concerned about ensuring grid reliability than, than some of the state lawmakers. And, you know, are the, you know, will we see some kind of crisis here? Can the grid produce that much more energy? Well, we're not uh, we're not in the in the game of projecting, but I will say there are a couple of risks here that, that that could come up. So first of all, a lot of the U.S. faces long interconnection queues. Just getting a project from 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 an idea to on the ground and developed takes a long time. It can take multiple years. In fact, some of the wholesale regional markets that facilitate interconnection have paused interconnection queues in order to address the backlog of projects that they've been looking over for years. Now they're trying to both the markets and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission are trying to reform those interconnection processes to make them more efficient, but that's still a work in progress. So that's the first issue. The second issue are supply chain constraints. It's getting the, you know, the equipment they need to, to deploy projects is getting harder to do. And the final issue is interest rates. These, you know, uh, the power sector is a capital intensive industry. So when the uh, interest rates go up, getting the money to pay for these these you know large investments becomes a challenge. Tim, I'm, I'm interested too, just more broadly, as you look across the country, as somebody who really studies this uh, backwards and forwards, are there certain states, um, Tim, where that you believe are in a, a relatively strong position with their grids, as opposed to others which you would classify maybe as being more at risk, more vulnerable? Uh, I would say that for this, the states that are perhaps at greatest risk because they tend to attract data centers are Virginia, California, Texas, uh, Arizona. These these tend to be the places where they they uh, where the IT professionals like to deploy data centers. So there, but these utilities that serve those areas, they know that this is coming, and so I think they're working proactively with potential customers, uh, with their regulators, trying to anticipate uh, and prepare for this this upcoming demand. Um, and then are there also implications for electricity rates? Now, I know it's a highly regulated industry, but if you are seeing 
more demand, you know, in theory, at least, you could get some renegotiation of rates, or do you not see that as a concern? Well, so Economics 101 suggests that if demand goes up, so does, you know, the price. Yeah. Uh, but you're right that this is a regulated industry. Now, it depends on where the uh, data centers are deployed. If they are in uh, wholesale market areas that, um, you know, and, and as a consequence of their demand, supply is it becomes constrained that there could be concerns about wholesale market prices uh going way up we saw that for 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 non-data center reasons for example uh storm related weather related issues in texas and in california where prices skyrocketed because demand uh out, out supply uh so here what they're going to be looking for is to find uh power prices that can work uh, for the data centers and for the customers Tim, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And obviously this is a situation and an issue that's not going away. We appreciate your time. No, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thanks.